Today we're going to look at a scene from Raiders of the Lost Ark. This is a very simple scene done very complexly. I'm going to analyze this shot by shot. I'll be in the bottom right hand corner. We're going to have a ton of fun as we look at the complexities of this brief scene from the movie. Stay tuned. <laughs> Here I am in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. We're going to look at this scene from early in the Raiders of the Lost Ark movie, shot for shot. And I'm going to pause the video every few seconds just to give you some ideas of what's going on and why what we're seeing is important. This scene is what's called an exposition scene. Here the characters are just going to talk to each other, revealing the plot not just to each other but to us, the audience. We get to learn a little bit more about the story, the goals of the story, and why the characters would be motivated in this movie to do what they're doing. Usually exposition scenes are done quickly or differently than what you'll see here. Here the characters just sit down and talk to each other. And they even have a lecture hall with a chalkboard, a teaching moment, and that can be actually kind of boring in a movie. Who wants to sit and watch a teacher at a chalkboard talking endlessly? Well, this scene tries to solve that problem by making everything dynamic. Placement of the characters, the editing, the settings, and the props all add something to the scene that make it lively and interesting, much more so than it would be if you just had over-the-shoulder shot, over-the-shoulder shot, and cutting back and forth to each one. So here's the scenario. Over here, you've got Indiana Jones being a professor right now. In his hands, he's got a book. Here is his dean or provost, somebody who's the head of the college. They're going into a lecture hall to talk to government officials. The government officials are going to reveal something to them and try to get Indiana Jones to do something for the federal government. This, of course, is taking place right prior to World War II or the U.S.'s entry into World War II. And the Nazis are doing something in Egypt, trying to unearth the Ark of the Covenant in order to rule the world somehow. Have you? Professor of Archaeology expert on the occult, and uh, how does one say it? Obtainer of rare antiquities. All right, they're talking a lot, but we can almost ignore the talking and watch what's happening and understand what's going on. Now, first thing that happened is this book was set down so loudly that it echoed throughout this lecture hall. The book is of primary importance, and why was it set down like that? Because later in the scene, the whole thing, the Ark of the Covenant picture is going to be revealed to these men. They're going to understand what it is when they open up the book. So in about three minutes, you're going to see that book open up, three minutes in terms of the movie time. But it will also be prominently featured in the shots. In fact, this book, it would not be noticed by ordinary moviegoers until the moment they open it, right? But really, it's been there the whole time, making noise and set in the frame so that you can be prepared for the moment when they open it. Oh, and by the way, who has secret government meetings in a gigantic, echoey lecture hall? I guess these guys do. One way of saying it, why don't you sit down? You'll be more comfortable. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, you're a man of many talents. Uh, you studied under Professor Ravenwood at the University of Chicago. Yes, I did. You know this little camera move downward there? Now these characters are separated into pairs. You've got the college people over here separated by the tables and the podium and this stuff, and then the government guys sitting down over here. That's important information for us to see that the Indiana Jones crew is going to be different in desires and mission and purpose than the government agents. In fact, as you know if you've seen this movie, the government, the federal government, isn't all that great here. They're after the Ark of the Covenant for their own reasons. So you got Jones going after the Ark because it's a precious artifact that's of great historical value. You got the federal government wanting it to to keep it their secret, or maybe their secret weapon eventually. And then you got the Nazis trying to use it to rule the world. Jones is working with the federal government, but he's not. And that's exactly what this shot shows us, that he is part of their efforts, but he's separate from them. Not just with the podium and the table separating these two pairs, but also Jones standing up here and being on the left side versus the government guys on the right side. You have no idea of his present whereabouts? Uh... Just rumors, really. Somewhere in Asia, I think. I haven't really spoken to him for 10 years. We were friends, but uh, had a bit of a falling out, I'm afraid. Mm. Dr. Jones. 
So we're going to see several different shots from several different angles. What we just saw was Indiana Jones. We were looking up at him from a low angle. He looked powerful. And here, right here, we're looking sort of down at these guys, a high angle looking down, so they don't look so powerful. In these two shots, therefore, the Jones party is better or slightly more powerful. These guys are not. But you're going to see other shots where the government officials look powerful and Jones looks meek, trapped, or contained. I'm going to highlight those for you eventually. But at the moment, Jones has some, sort of some control here of this scene. Now, you must understand that this is all strictly confident. Oh, and you'll notice as the camera moves in there, what's right there? That's the book or right there. There's the book right there. And it's going to be in the frame, just not in focus. And you're not going to notice it. But unconsciously, your brain registers that it's there, preparing you for when it's opened in about two minutes in movie time. I understand. Uh, <clears throat> Yesterday afternoon, our European sections intercepted a, a German communique that was sent from Cairo to Berlin. Now, you see, Cairo, over the last two now, years, the Nazis have had teams of archaeologists running around the world looking for all kinds of religious artifacts. Hitler's a nut on the subject. He's crazy. He's obsessed with the occult. Oh, so there's Jones putting his finger down on the book right as he's talking about, you know, the mission and the Ark of the Covenant and whatnot. And so that's interesting. Like, here you have another cue that the book is sitting there. And right now, apparently, there's some kind of German archaeological dig going on in the desert outside of Cairo. Now, we've got some information here. So here's one of these weird angles that I don't know exactly what to do with because it's a low angle looking up at Jones. He looks tall, big. He's taking up a huge part of the frame. He's going from the bottom to the top of the frame. But he's also contained or trapped over here in this left-hand corner from the perspective. Notice we're looking from behind this government official from his perspective. He's got Jones trapped in a corner. And although that's literal here, it's metaphorical in the sense that they're forcing Jones almost to do something. And they will trap him later on by forcing him to get the Ark and then giving it up. So Jones is at once powerful, but trapped, right? He's dominant, but he's also on the sort of weak, unstable left-hand side of the frame with these guys sort of pinning him down over here. It's a very interesting shot right here. But we can't make anything out of it, and maybe you can. Tannis development proceeding. Acquire headpiece, staff of Ra... Abner Ravenwood, U.S. Nazis have discovered tennis. Just what does that mean to you? Uh... And you're going to notice in this scene another thing, that Jones is the dynamic one. He's the one that's going to move around the set. The other guys are static. They're just sitting there or standing, while Jones is the one moving around, messing around. And, of course, that's a theme, right? He's actually going to make things happen he's the character that's going to make the plot unfold in this movie whereas the other guys are just telling him information or rooting him on he moves around he does stuff that's what we're actually seeing here with him walking around tannis well oh, the city of tannis is one of the possible resting places of the lost ark the lost ark yeah the ark of the covenant the chest the hebrews used to carry around the ten commandments what do you what mean, do you ten mean the commandments you're talking about the ten commandments yes the actual ten commandments the original stone tablets that moses brought down out of mount harab and smashed if you believe in that sort of thing you think you guys ever go to sunday school well I... oh well, look the hebrews took the broken pieces and put them in the ark when they settled in canaan they put the ark in a place called the temple of solomon in jerusalem where it stayed for many years until all of a sudden, Whoosh is gone. Where? Well, nobody knows where or when. However, an Egyptian pharaoh... Shishak. Yes, invaded the city of Jerusalem around about 980 B.C., and he may have taken the ark back to the city of Tanis and hidden it in a secret chamber called the Well of Souls. See? A very interesting shot right here. Look now, this is different than what we saw where Jones was pinned in the left-hand corner. This is Jones out of focus up here on the left, sort of staring these guys down. I mean, look how two-dimensionally, how massive he is compared to them. They're weak, they're pathetic. They don't know anything about the Ark of the Covenant story. They're being lectured, they're being told stuff here, and so they're listening intently. But it also means that they can't actually get the Ark themselves and that Jones is the one to do it. And look how dominant he is. So this scene has us see Jones as small and weak, as tough and huge, as the one who knows stuff, as the one who's trapped. And the same thing with these government guys. So it's actually creating these characters 
just through the way they're placed in relationship to each other. Never mind the content of what's being said here. Again, you could not listen to this content and still kind of understand the relationship dynamics between these four characters, I think, just by watching the shot by shot. Secret chamber. However, about a year after the pharaoh had returned to Egypt, the city of Tanis was consumed by the desert in a sandstorm which lasted a whole year, wiped clean by the wrath of God. Uh, uh, obviously, we've come to the right men. Now, you seem to know uh, all about this, Tanis. Uh, no, no, not really. Ravenwood is the real expert. Abner did the first serious work on Tanis, collected some of its relics. Was his obsession really? So here's Jones standing here alone and isolated. In just about 10 seconds, he's going to go back up to the chalkboard and lecture to them, drawing the chalkboard. And you've got this interesting dimension of the light coming through the stained, beautiful stained glass windows here, and then the darkness of the shadow he's casting. Of course, this movie has a lot of light and dark imagery, both thematically with the Nazis being the dark ones, trying to unearth the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant shooting light, laser light out of itself. Jones standing it later, later on and using light to open a tomb. And then this dark shadow. This actually, I think, talks about his character somewhat. He's a darker character than you would believe. And a lot of this movie, in fact, the opening sequence shows him as this dark, forbidding figure. Hints of his inner self, I think. But he never found the city. Frankly, we're somewhat suspicious of Mr. Ravenwood, uh, American being mentioned so prominently in a secret Nazi cable. Oh, rubbish. Ravenwood's no Nazi. Well, what did the Nazis want him for, then? Well, obviously, the Nazis are looking for the headpiece to the Staff of Ra, and they think Abner's got it. What exactly is a headpiece to the Staff of Ra? Well, the staff is just a stick. I don't know, about this big. Nobody really knows for sure how high it is. It's... So he's going to go up the chalkboard now and lecture to these guys. And, of course, when any teacher d makes this move in a classroom, it signals to the students to be bored or fall asleep. That can't happen here in this movie, right? So what's going to happen? You're going to see a couple cuts here to reaction shots. One of the government agent, one of this guy right here, and they're going to both sort of signal to the audience, oh, you should pay attention to Indiana Jones as he's lecturing at the chalkboard. Uh, it's a cap with an elaborate headpiece in the shape of the sun. With By the way, this is foreshadowing. This is actually going to happen later in the movie where he's the staff of Ra to open up a tomb using light and casting shadows as he does on the chalkboard here. Literal foreshadowing. It's actually going to happen also later in the movie. Crystal in the center. And what you did was you take reaction shot number one. Ooh, let's look at Jones. Staff to a special room in Tatnus, a map room with a miniature. Reaction shot number two. Oh, isn't he great? You see these two different reaction shots give you two different kind of praises of Jones at the chalkboard. City all laid out on the floor. And if you put the staff in a certain place at a certain time of day, the sun shone through here and made a beam that came down on the floor here and gave you the exact location of the Well of the Souls where the Ark of the Covenant was kept, right? Which is exactly what the Nazis are looking for. Now, what does this Ark look like? Here we go. Now, here comes the book. We've seen it at the bottom of the frame the whole time. Several shots have featured it, and now here it comes out. And this is the moment where the John Williams mysterious eerie music is going to be played finally, because, note, we've just had sound here for the voices no sound effects besides what's in the set. Now we get music. Picture of it right here. Oh, and by the way, this book, I mean, it's so elaborate to open up. Who in the world uses this kind of book? But anyway, it's got these latches and then you got to open it. Oh, this is all great theater. That's it. L a lot of dynamics here. There's a lot of dynamics there, setting the book down, focus on the book, moving the camera around, having the, having the characters stand up, just to get you interested in a book. And then you got one of the worst Sunday school drawings I've ever seen in my life, as if this is historical truth, and that's what they're talking, this is so ridiculous. The guys in the scene are saying, well, this is actually what the Ark of the Covenant does, but the movie actually makes it serious because of this music that's played here, along with the close shots of the book. Notice the shadows that kind of flicker over it. These guys have shadows that occasionally go over it. They're... God, 
Yes, that's just what the Hebrews thought. Oh, the shadow imagery here. So shadows here with the light coming into the stained glass. And look, Jones, tall, dominant on this left-hand side again, sort of controlling everything, but also sort of pushed over there to the left-hand side. This has been a consistent character placement in this sequence. Uh... Now watch that. Ooh, and there it is. Let's point at it. And we have a little shadow, a finger in a shadow. We put our finger on the arc. Actually, the guy who's carrying it. This is just funny to me. Sorry, I'm pausing to look at this. But this is ridiculous and serious at the same time. Supposed to be coming out of there. Lightning. Fire. Power of God or something. And again, Jones is the dynamic one moving away. And here you cut to this shot where you have only his shadow on the chalkboard for this moment. And you'll see him isolated by himself as he goes over there by the chalkboard because, of course, he's different than these other three guys. These other three guys, what do they do? They're just bureaucrats. Jones is a bureaucrat as a professor. I speak as one. But he also goes over the chalkboard because he's going to go for the Ark of the Covenant, be by himself, and be a loner. That's something that happens in this movie repeatedly. Beginning to understand Hitler's interest in this. Oh, yes. The Bible speaks of the Ark leveling mountains and laying waste to entire regions. An army which carries the Ark before it is invincible. And there you have it, friends. That's it for this sequence. It ends with Jones and his friend here. That's it for the government agents. You won't see them again in the movie. The focus here being on the light, the low angle looking up at these guys is being powerful. They can achieve this goal. Jones is the one to do it. We've already seen him as a great archaeologist adventurer. We see him as a professor. He's super smart. He can be in all worlds. He's got a humongous skill set. And this shot in particular tells us that with Jones looking off into the distance in this vast architectural hall with this guy looking back at him, they look daff dapper, but they're also adventurers who are going to get the arc. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. I've got lots of shot-by-shot -shot analyses. If you like this video, click on those, watch them, give me comments. Thank you so much. Have a great day.